Hi, welcome to my studio. And um, I want to, first of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Jody. I'm a former home economics teacher, family consumer sciences teacher, and I had the privilege of teaching sewing and culinary arts and um, to high school, middle school students for many years. And then I taught privately for many years. Um, anyway, but I'm a home economist at heart. So this is the uh, year 2020, and um, it's going to be marked by COVID. Uh, not only that, a lot of people are coming back to sewing, and that just thrills me. I currently own a fabric store, and it's a teaching fabric store. The name of the store is Rain Tree Quilting, and I love to teach people how to sew. Uh, what I would like to do is introduce you to threading your machine and some very basic sewing techniques. Um, because what I find is a lot of people are trying to teach themselves how to sew and they're making mistakes and they're getting really frustrated with their sewing machine and then they think the sewing machine is the problem. So I think sewing should be fun and it's fun if you know how to use your equipment. It's also fun if you have good equipment. So um, let's talk about machines. So I'm going to be demonstrating on a couple of machines today. I'm actually a, a Bernina dealer, um, but I'm going to have an Eversone machine here because um, it's a basic mechanical machine and this belongs to a friend of mine. And I want to show you how to thread a basic mechanical machine. And then I'm going to also show you how to thread a Bernina B770. The 770s are one of their mid-range machines, um, but you you really do need to, to know how to thread your machine properly. So to get started, let's talk thread and let's talk needles. So I have five spools of thread here and they're all a little bit different. So this thread, this thread, and this thread are cross wound threads, meaning that they sort of make the threads kind of cross each other and that's how they're uh, spun on their, that's how they're put on the spool. So these threads are designed so that the thread comes off the end of the spool, okay? They are not designed to go on a, a vertical spool pin. All of your antique machines come with only vertical spool pins because threads used to be stack wound for the home sewist um, and the cross wound threads were reserved for the garment industry or the sewing industry. So stack wound threads actually go on your vertical spool pin and they pull off like this and that's how they feed best. Your cross wound threads, which I have a black spool in this machine right now, are designed to go horizontal on a conventional sewing machine so that the thread pulls from the top of the spool. I'm going to remove the black for filming purposes because black does not film well because it absorbs all light. So we're going to uh, put a color on there so that it's easier for you to see what we're supposed to do. So when you unbox your sewing machine, you're going to find that you have um, usually um, spool pins, you might have a little felt, or the Berninas come with a foam um, spool holder, and it's not really a spool holder, but it goes down on the spool pin, and it keeps your thread from rocking when you're pulling, when the thread's coming off. It also helps you to secure your thread when you're putting it onto your horizontal spool pin, and you'll see that in a few minutes when I demonstrate that. This particular little machine came with a little felt round. So I'm going to make sure that that is on my spool pin. And I'm going to put my thread on the um, against the felt. And then I'm going to choose a spool cap that is closest to the size of the thread. Then the thread is going to come off the end like it's designed to. Prior to anything else, I want to make sure that my presser foot is in a position. When I taught middle school students, um, one of the things I used to say to them to help them remember, the presser foot presses on the fabric. The foot pedal, which is on the floor, is for your foot. 
So the presser foot needs to be in the up position when you thread your machine. And the reason is because the presser foot lever that controls the position of the presser foot also engages or disengages your thread tension. So my thread tension adjustment knob is right here. Usually a sewing machine has some sort of indication of what your average tension is. So in this machine, it's four. The discs for my tension are inside the machine. You can't see them. And on most new machines, you can't see the discs. But what you need to know is those discs, which look a lot like dinner plates, are clamped together when the presser foot is in a down position so that your thread is feeding tightly through the machine. They're open when the presser foot is in the up position, which allows you to thread your machine properly. So rule number one, presser foot in the up position. Then you follow the arrows on, the, on your machine, if they have arrows, and most machines do anymore. You lay your thread into your tension. You come up and around over your take-up lever. The take-up lever needs to be in the up position when you're threading your machine. Some new machines have the take-up lever built so far deep into the machine that you can't even see them anymore. And um, so you need to make sure, those machines usually are electronic. So on those machines, you need to make sure your needle is in the needle up position. I'll show you that on the Bernina, okay? If it's, um, anyway, take up lever up. The take up lever takes the thread up and down. Then the thread comes through a thread guide. Sometimes there's a couple of thread guides. On this machine, there's one thread guide. Now I can lower my presser fit and I'm going to actually thread my needle from the front to the back. And I'm gonna lay that right there. Now a friend of mine, Sophie, is actually filming. And Sophie, I don't know if you can get close enough to the needle. And I don't have my mo needle model with me today. But there is a groove right in here. That groove is the front of your needle. When you are sewing, your thread lays inside that groove. Needles have different sizes, and si the size of the needle matters very much. So, for example, this is a jean size 14 needle, and I've been making a lot of blue jeans lately, so this is what I've been using for the blue jeans. The size 14 ne needle allows you to sew with a heavier thread, and threads have weights to them, and sometimes the weight is actually written on the thread, sometimes it's not. But anyway, um, so for example, this metallic thread is a 40 weight thread, and it tells you that you have to use a top stitch size 14 needle on it. Um, not all threads have that information on it, but what you need to know is your all-purpose thread. You can use a size 12 needle, you can use a size 14. 40 weight thread, however, if you use a size 12 needle on it, you will skip stitches. So sometimes you think that you are, um, your machine's not working right and you just have the wrong size needle in there. So what I want you to think about is the groove is bigger on the larger size needle. The 9040 takes bigger thread than the 8012. So this pack of needles right here, these are from Schmetz and it's a great brand of sewing needles. They're very readily available. This is a Jersey needle. Jersey needles are designed for really super stretchy knits. And so if you don't want to use a Jersey needle on a woven quilting cotton because it can kind of snag your fabric. And vice versa, if you use a Sharps needle on your knit fabric, you can snag the knit. So you want to use the right needle. So Jersey needles are actually ballpoint tipped and they move the fibers apart to put the, the stitch in, and that's what you want on a knit. And this is a multi-size pack, which I think is a great way when you're new to sewing is to buy multi-size packs. So you have 10s, 12s, 14s in here. And so if I'm using a heavier thread, like a 40 weight thread, I would use the 1490. Um, the 1280 works for, and the 1070 works for your all-purpose threads. So there's a lot more to learn about threads and needles, but I want you to think of your sewing tools, like scissors, seam rippers, needles and pins, like tools in a carpenter's belt. 
Um, not all screws, not all nails work for the same job. And it's the same thing with your sewing tools, okay? Um, I want you to also look at needles as a disposable, consumable product. They get dull. I keep a sharps container in my sewing studio, and when I change my needles out, I put my old needles in the sharps container to throw them away. So that was a little commercial break on why I use different needles. This machine has a sharps needle in it right now, and it's a Microtex 12. Um, we just threaded the top of it. Now I'm gonna raise my presser foot. I'm gonna double check, make sure my take-up lever is in the up position. And then I'm gonna cut my thread. This machine has a little thread cutter up on the uh, left side of the machine. So now I wanna put my bobbin in. So we already uh, wound a bobbin and we'll show you how to wind a bobbin again a little bit later. Um, bobbins are the part of the machine that goes in, is the, the part that holds the thread for the bottom part of your machine. There is no such thing as a universal bobbin, okay? Make sure you buy bobbins that are designed for your sewing machine. Bobbins come in many different shapes and many different sizes. And you'll find that a lot of bobbins might have the same circumference here, but they're not the same height here. Okay, so um, don't use, for example, a Singer 66 bobbin, which is a narrower bobbin in this machine. It'll The case will hold it but your stitch quality will be really terrible. And on some machines and some brands, your warranties are void if you use the wrong parts in them. So I like to compare this to, I don't put a Chevy part in my Ford truck. So um, just pay attention to that. Talk to your sewing machine dealer. Um, and I do think it's important to go through a dealer, someone that's knowledgeable that can help you learn how to use your machine. You can't get that kind of customer service by buying machines on the internet. Anyway, so, your bobbin goes in the bobbin case. You're going to pull it towards you, and it should turn uh, clockwise. Then you come through the slit, and you're going to snap your thread between the tension discs and the case itself. And you'll feel it pulling kind of tight. So now I'm just going to snap my bobbin in place. And if you look real close in here, your bobbin fits in there just like a jigsaw puzzle piece does. This should not rotate all the way around. Always make sure your bobbin case is in all the way prior to sewing. Now on this particular machine, we're going to bring the bottom thread up. And the way you do that is you hold your needle thread. While you're holding your needle thread, you're going to rotate your hand wheel one full ro rotation towards you. Please don't rotate it backwards. And till my take up lever is in the up position. The reason you want your take-up lever in the up position is while you're rotating your hand wheel towards you, the thread from the needle is getting wrapped around the bobbin case and the thread comes all the way around when the take-up lever is up. So now I just pulled my bobbin thread up and I can cut my bobbin thread. Now I'm gonna demonstrate that again and Sophie is filming from a different angle so that you can see what I'm doing. So I have my bobbin in my bobbin case. When I pull my thread, it's rotating clockwise. That's what you want. This little finger needs to be pointing up. My take-up lever is in the up position. Now look down on the bottom here. This is the hook of my machine. So when I move my hand wheel, it moves, okay? So when my take-up lever is up, this is where it needs to be when I put my bobbin case in the machine. I snap it in place, kind of hear it snap in there. Some people just use the lever to put it in, but if you snap it, you kind of hear it. So that's why I prefer to teach it that way. Now I'm gonna hold this thread. Now this time, watch what this thread does here, and I'm gonna narrate what's going on. So Sophie, can you see that good? Okay, I'm gonna rotate my hand wheel towards me. My needle's going down, and now that pink thread is gonna wrap around the bottom because my hook, which is right here. I'm gonna use a long needle to point to this. Right here, you see the hook? Grabs my thread and it brings it all the way up. Now my take-up lever is back up and I can pull both threads through, okay? So now that machine is threaded, it's properly threaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, 
cut my machine, cut my thread there on the side of my machine. Most machines have thread cutters located up top here, and some of them have a better quality thread cutter than others. So that's how you thread your machine. Now, when you get ready to sew on it, usually this arm will clip right back on. I'm gonna leave it off right now though because I'm trying to show you your machines um, and I wanna to talk to you about the parts of your machine. This right here is a stitch plate and this stitch plate is secured in place with screws. So the machine comes with a little screwdriver. Don't lose this because it fits in tight spaces. So I always recommend that people keep the parts that came with their machine in the, um, the little case that came with their machine. Okay. So the stitch plate fits over the feed dogs. The feed dogs feed your fabric from the front to the back of the machine. When you lower your presser foot to sew, the presser foot puts pressure on your fabric and feed dogs and that's what allows your machine to feed. So I'm gonna raise my presser foot this particular machine has a variety of stitches and I want, it to, I want to sew just straight. So this is my straight stitch. This machine has the capability of doing stretch stitches also. The stretch stitches are indicated by orange. They're often indicated by red. And so if I want to do a stretch stitch, I take this particular knob and I rotate it to the S. And then every time I turn this, if there's an orange stitch, that's the stitch it's going to do. We're not going to get into a lot of detail about that right now, but I just want you to understand the markings on your machine. So make sure your stitch selector is on the stitch that you want it. So this is selecting my stitch. This is selecting whether it's conventional stitches, which are my black stitches right here, or if it's a stretch stitch. This is also my stitch length knob on this particular machine. Always read your sewing machine manual and make sure you understand what you're doing. Sewing will be a lot more fun if you know what you're doing. And so my stitch lengths are one millimeter, two millimeter, three or four or anywhere in between. I'm going to recommend that you do most of your stitches between two and a half and three millimeter depending on what you're doing. So I have it set at three millimeter right now. This is my stitch width knob and that's indicated by this zigzag line right here. That's a universal symbol for stitch width. And so for a straight stitch, I want it at zero. So I've got a piece of fabric, I've got it folded in half. I'm gonna lay it underneath my presser foot and I'm gonna use my presser foot as a guide just to test out my stitches. I'm gonna sew forward about three stitches, or two to three stitches. This is my back stitch lever. This is a universal symbol for sewing backwards. I'm gonna hold it down and sew backwards to the beginning. And then I'm gonna come forward. And at the end, I'm gonna back stitch and come forward. Raise my, uh, get my take up lever all the way up using my hand wheel. Please only rotate your hand wheel towards you, which is counterclockwise. Otherwise, you're gonna kind of stuff thread in the bottom of your machine. Raise my presser foot, pull out my fabric and my thread, and then I cut my thread on the handy dandy thread cutter that's conveniently located to the left of your machine. So, when I'm testing out stitches, I like to take a piece of fabric and I fold it and I sew on the fold. And then that way I can open it up and test the tension. And that's an absolutely beautiful stitch. So now I wanna show you a little tip. Usually when you start sewing, your first stitch will have a lot of thread, more so than this often, kind of nested there. That's because your first stitch doesn't really have any tension on it. So there are a couple of ways that you can uh, deal with this. And the easiest way for the beginner sewer is to hold these threads when you start sewing. Lower your presser foot, hold them, so forward and backwards, and then continue through. Always backstitch. Check your take-up lever. Don't watch your needle, because if you look right now, my needle's up, my take-up lever's not up. And when my take-up lever's not up, the hook isn't up. So I'm gonna, or up in its right position. So anyway, I'm gonna rotate my hand wheel towards me till the take-up lever is in the up position. Then I'm gonna raise my presser foot. I'm gonna pull my fabric out, and I'm gonna cut the fabric 
cut not cut the fabric, cut the thread on the thread cutter that's conveniently located right there. So anyway, so now on this second row that I did, I have no loops of thread because I was holding my my thread. Another thing that you can do is you can take a pair of tweezers. So if you're in the middle of a big project and you want to um, avoid that um, loop from showing, you take your top thread and you hold it up. So let me grab it with a pair of tweezers. So I'm going to rotate my handle towards me one stitch and I'm going to pull my bottom thread up. Quilters do this all the time when they're when they're quilting. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to do little stitches and back stitch. And then I'm going to continue sewing. So that is another way to actually sew and avoid that little loop. Take up lever up prior to raising my presser foot and pulling my fabric out and then cutting my thread. And again, so I've got a really nice start right there. So if you're brand, a brand new owner to a sewing machine, I really recommend starting by uh, threading your machine and working through your stitches, work through your manual. You can even take fabric and test each stitch out. It's really kind of a fun thing to do and follow your instruction. Manual, manual regarding how to change your presser feet and everything. This particular machine um, has uh, snap-on feet, which is real popular now. And um, so to put a new foot on, I hold this little guide. And I just snap, I snap it on. Okay, this is a zipper foot, and this zipper foot can be put on in two different positions. It can be put here or there. What it allows me to do is um, make sure that I'm not sewing on metal, number one, but my needle will go in right at this opening here, and my zipper teeth will be, you know, off here. And again, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on that, but I just wanted you to see how your feet went on the machine. So this is your buttonhole foot. Same thing, it just snaps in place right there. This little foot is for sewing on buttons, and yes, you can sew buttons on with your sewing machine. Your manual will teach you how to do that. I'm not gonna get into that now. Maybe in a future video I would do that. This right here is um, a guide. It will screw usually in to on this machine, it looks like it goes back here. I can't really see where it goes from where I'm sitting and I don't wanna move around a lot, but, but this uh, will screw into the back of your machine. So if you wanna sew parallel lines on a, a project, like on a quilting project, you can set this at an inch, an inch and a half, two inches, and that's what that's for. It'll go through a hole, you tighten a screw, um, and a lot of machines come with those nowadays. Your machines usually come with a little brush so I'll show you how to clean out your machine. This machine is brand new, so it's not dirty, but every machine should be cleaned probably between each project. You will remove your bobbin, bobbin case, and you can brush out in here. You can remove your stitch plate. You do that with the, the screwdriver that it comes with. You brush the lint out there. Q-tips work fantastic also. And then you can remove the hook cover right here. And I like these, they have a good little CB hook in them. And you brush out. And then when you oil your machine, it's literally one drop of oil where metal goes on, on metal. And it's one drop, you don't need a lot. This is your sewing machine oil. Comes with your machine. No, do not raid. A tool shop and just grab any kind of oil that will damage your machine and so like anything else you use the product that's designed for your machine when someone's new to sewing I usually recommend that they rotate their hand wheel a little bit 
after they oil it and to make sure that they put the hook cover back on there properly. Take up lever needs to be up prior to reinserting your bobbin. Keep your machine clean. Use good quality thread too. So why does thread matter? Well, some threads spit out a lot more lint than other threads. Um, there are a lot of good threads on the market. If your thread looks real fuzzy, it's probably not really good thread. I don't recommend using really old spools of thread. I have a lot of uh, old wood spools that belong to my grandmother. I keep them for nostalgic reasons and they're beautiful. They're in a glass jar at home, but those threads really aren't very good in your sewing machine. They're cotton threads and cotton gets brittle with age. I sew with cotton thread, but not old cotton thread. So a good spool of thread costs a couple bucks, several bucks, but it's worth using really good thread. Anyway, so now let's go over to the Bernina because it is threaded a little bit differently. So I want you to look how I'm gonna remove my thread and I remove the thread from the little ever sewn or mechanical machine the same way. So my thread, I have cross wound thread on a horizontal spool pin. I'm gonna cut my thread right above the first thread guide and I'm gonna pull it through. I always pull my thread through the machine in the same direction that it's designed to thread your machine. And that's so that I'm just not gunking up the inside by pulling the thread back and forth, back and forth. So um, now to thread this machine, same thing. This sewing machine is a machine with built-in dual feed. So this is an upper feed mechanism that engages with the middle feed dog. This allows for really even stitching in my stitch field. A walking foot does a different thing. A walking foot is an attachment. Some machines have built-in walking feet that attach with both the right and the left side, and those are used for quilting. For stitching, I like built-in dual feed um, all the time. So this machine comes with a variety of presser feet. It comes with feet that are designed for dual feed and feet that are designed to use when you don't want to use your dual feet. And there are times when you don't want to use dual feed. So if you own a sewing machine that has built-in dual feed, always engage your dual feed when you're using a presser foot that's just designed for dual feed. If you do not, you will not have any pressure on the middle a feed dog and the stitch quality will be horrible and you'll think there's something wrong with your machine and you're just not setting your machine up properly. So I'm going to raise my dual feed and the way I do that is, I don't know if you can see my finger back here, I press down, I gently pull it up and back and it just hides back up on the top back there. So now I'm going to put my presser foot on. Now Bernina is quite famous for its one piece presser feet. You literally can put them on your machine with one hand. So I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna put my presser foot on. I'm gonna lower this little lever here. Can you see that in the film? So if you're able to get that. Push that back, put my foot on the cone, lower it, one hand. I love that feature. Then I'm gonna lower my dual feed because I have a dual feed foot on. I would not lower my dual feed if I was using a regular foot. Okay, so anyway, I've got a stitch plate on my machine designed for decorative stitches and zigzag stitches. This machine has the capability of sewing nine millimeter wide stitches. Um, most machines go up to 5.5 millimeters, but this one will do wide decorative stitches, which is really kind of a fun thing to do. If I'm just quilting or doing straight stitching or working with bridal fabrics or chiffons, even rayon, and I'm only sewing straight, I put a straight stitch plate in, okay? Um, free motion quilting, it's really important to put a straight stitch machine, a plate. Or if I hook my embroidery module up and I'm doing embroidery, I put my straight stitch plate in. These stitch plates are really easy to remove. Um, and the reason they're easy to remove is because they're not attached with screws. There's a little bullseye in the back. You just press it, lift it up, pull it out. So this machine does need to be cleaned a little bit because I've been using it a lot. I use the brush that comes with it. I brush the lint out. Never, never, never use canned air on your sewing machine. You will see people telling you that all the time. 
it blows moisture into your machine, it's not a good idea. It's better to suck the lint out instead of blowing it deep in, especially on a computerized machine. But I don't even use canned air on a mechanical machine. And, um, and I get my advice from my very highly trained sewing machine tech. And so, um, but anyway, just don't do it. You can buy small shop bags and get electronic attachments, and those are great. So if you've got a lot of lint in there, you can actually use that if you want to. So anyway, so these presser, these stitch plates are really easy to remove, and I mean, it's a more expensive machine, so it does have features that cost more to manufacture. Anyway, stitch plate, presser foot, dual feet engaged. So now, same thing this with this machine as with the um, other little mechanical machine I was showing you. I've got a vertical spool pin for stack wound threads, and then I have a horizontal spool pin for my cross wound threads. So I'm gonna take my thread, and this is very important. I'm just gonna bring it to the back of my machine and clip it up, and then lay it in this groove following this arrow. Please look at the top here for a few minutes. I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. I'm bringing it up and I'm holding my thread here and I'm making sure that thread is getting in there. When you're brand new to a new electronic machine, one of the things we're finding is people have their presser foot lowered and they're trying to thread their machine and then their thread doesn't necessarily get into the thread tension adjustment slot properly. So this is my thread tension adjustment slot. So now, anyway, so now I'm gonna come up. There's a little thread regulator in there or a check spring. And it's a little spring that moves when you're sewing and it keeps your thread regulated. And then I'm gonna bring it up and around in the direction of this arrow, snap it in place. You can actually see my take up lever in there. And again, my take-up lever is in the up position. Then I'm going to bring it back down through the slot. I've got a thread guide right here. And I've got a thread guide right above my needle. Okay. So this machine has a needle threader. A lot of machines come with needle threaders, and this is how I use this one. I wrap my thread around, and I bring my thread to the eye of the needle push this through, I'll let go of both of them at the same time. There is a little bit of a rhythm to that and I made that look really easy. So be aware that it, it takes a little practice. Then I pull my thread out. And I cut my thread on the thread cutter to the left of the machine. My bobbin on this machine, and this needs to be cleaned out because I've been. The last thing I made on here was a pair of um, blue jeans. <laughs> so, this has the Bernina hook system. It's a patented hook system that Bernina developed, oh gosh, quite a few years ago. It takes a giant bobbin. The bobbin holds 80% more, 70 to 80% more thread than your conventional bobbin. But anyway, so the bobbin goes in like this. There's only one way you can put it in this particular bobbin case. So the little mirrors, basically, which speak to a th uh, little sensor in there to let me know if I'm out of thread, go in. The thread's going to come through a slit, just like on the other hook. Snap it in between the, the tension disc, and you just snap it up. So it's coming between this hole and this hole, and it's between here. This is the release button, so don't press on that when you're inserting the bobbin. Put your thread in, your, your bobbin in, and then cut your thread right here, okay? That machine is now threaded. I do not need to bring the upper thread up. And there's a table that I would normally slide onto this, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I want you to see the parts of the machines a little more readily. So I'm going to do my first stitch. By the way, this machine can be set up so that it will backstitch for you at the beginning. And I have it set up that way. This machine also stops electronically with my uh, needle and my take-up lever in the position. 
and that's controlled right here on the screen. So if I touch that needle up, touch that needle down, and it has built-in scissors, and I'm not gonna get into great detail on that. I just really wanted to show you how to thread the machine. So like any other machine, you end up with a little nest down here on your first stitch. If you want to avoid that, because I'm also using uh, my built-in scissors, my thread is short. So I want my needle in the up position to avoid that. And then I do my first stitch and I can pull my thread, pull it through. And if I hold both threads, then so I can prevent that. Oh, I could have cut my thread, but I didn't. I also have a thread cutter off to the side of the machine. So the threading that I just showed you works on all the Bernina, um, the, the hook system, all the Bernina 4 series, 5 series, and 7 series machines have the same hook system. So this time, and I know it's very difficult to see the cream thread on the cream fabric, but I was able to eliminate that nest just by holding that bottom thread. Anyway... Thank you for joining us today on how to thread your sewing machine. Sewing should be fun, so learn how to thread it and enjoy sewing.